All right, so the first uh, thing I want to go over the, is the properties of the standard deviation. And here we have the question, says the standard normal distribution has a mean of zero, this is just an example, and stand, standard deviation, which is used uh, the symbol sigma, sigma equals one. So sigma is always this used for standard deviation, oops, is always used for standard deviation. Um, and the letter Greek letter mu is always used for the mean. So this is the Greek letter mu, this is the Greek letter letter sigma. Mu and sigma. So if I'm looking at the 6895 99.7 rule, this is kind of how it works. If I have a mean of zero, I know that 68% of the data lies within one standard deviation of the mean. So that means if I go one standard deviation this way, and since my, since my standard deviation is one, that's gonna get me to negative one. And if I go this way, it's gonna get me to, let me add a black tick there. That's gonna get me to a positive one. Then I know that between there and there is 68% of the data. So between negative one and one is 68% of the data. So 68% of the data lies between those two values. 95% of the data is within two standard deviations. So instead of just going one, I'm gonna to have to go one, two in each direction. So that means down to negative two and up to a positive two. Between negative two and positive two. And between those two values, I'm gonna have 95% of my data. So that means 95% of the data in a normal distribution curve is between negative two or two standard distributions. And you can see that because and that that percentage stands for the area underneath the curve. The area underneath, so all this area underneath the curve is 95%. And then the last one, 99.7, almost all of the data is contained within three standard deviations. So one, two, three down here at negative three, and up here at one, two, positive three. So between there and there is 99.7% of the data. Okay, and you might see these kind of curves in like, um, this is used a lot for like birth weight and stuff like that. Um, and that's kind of how it works. Like if you're in like the 90th percentile, that means you're way up at the top somewhere. And if you're at the fourth percentile, it means you're way down at the bottom, like the bottom 4% or the top 90%. So between, whoops, sorry, between negative three and three. Okay, so you look at where you, first of all, you start with your mean, you put your zero, then you look at what your sigma, your standard deviation is, and you move that many in each direction. Says... For the population of adult sockeye salmon, suppose that the lengths of the salmon are approximately normally distributed with a mean of 78 and a standard deviation of 8. So my mu is equal to 78 and my sigma is equal to 8. It says sketch a normal curve to show the distribution of the lengths of the sockeye salmon. Then it says mark the values on the horizontal axis that are 1, 2, and 3 standard deviations from the mean. All right, so here we have the mean of 78. That's right in the center. Your mean is always in the center. And then if I go one standard deviation to the left and right, that's eight, a value of eight. So that means if I go over here, that's gonna be 70. If I go up here, that's gonna be 86 because I'm going up a value of eight for every one standard deviation. If I go up again, so that's the value for one. If I go up again, one more, then that means I'm going eight again each direction. So this is gonna be 62, and this is going to be 94. So that's two standard deviations. So first thing I did is I went one, one sigma, then I went two sigmas. Now what it wants me to do is three sigmas. So I'm gonna go one more there and right there. So I go one more, eight up. Every time I'm going, I'm going eight up. So I get 100 
and 2. And if I go down this way, it's going to be 54. Okay? And that's going up 3 sigmas. And that's going down 1 sigma. Right? 2 sigmas and 3 sigmas. Now, remember your rule, the 60... Remember what, what was it again? Let's just double check here. 68... 68, 95, 99. 68, 95, whoops, 99. So that means that between here and here, between one standard deviation, all in here, okay, is 68% of my data. 68% of my data lies within one standard deviation. So that means if I'm going half that, so if I'm just going to take half that into consideration, oops, that means that only part of it is going to be 34%. And 34%. It shows this in your textbook as well. The whole thing is 68, therefore one each part is 34. So this question says, what is the probability that a randomly selected adult sockeye, sockeye is between 72 and 80? I don't have 72 or 80, but I can add them in, right? I can add them in. I know halfway between 70 and 78 is right there, and it's going to be 74. Halfway between 70 and 74 is going to be 72. So if I need to kind of redraw this normal curve, which I'm going to do, Right? I have my value of 78. I'm going to put in my value of, I'm going to expand this a bit, 72. It's a terrible curve. I'm going to redo that. So I have over there, it goes up, and then down, and then over like that. So 72. And what's the amount of, what's the percent between those two? Well, if I cut the 34 in half, that would be my 74. 34 divided by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 17. So that means each section would be 17 and 17. And then if I cut it in half again, I'm going to take 17 divided by 2. So I get 8.5. So 8.5% is between 72 and 78. And that's a jump of 2. So if I go another jump of 2, it'll get me to 80. And that's going to be another 8.5%. So I have 8.5 plus 8 point, whoops, 0.5 is equal to 17% of my data, which is the probability that it will be between 72 and 80. So it's just a matter of taking, you know it's 68%. That means each section is 34. If I cut that in half, it's 17. If I cut it in half again, it's 8 and a half. That means every jump of 2, and I could, I could find, figure out for every jump of 1, so that if this said anything, I could say, okay, well, there's, however many between those, so it would be easy to